Good morning. So wonderful to see all of you here today. I'm sensing just a bit of energy in the room. It must be this post resurrection excitement we have, the story of an empty tomb and all the hope that we find, but it's also wide circle worship. It's also Confirmation Sunday. It's also a time when we get to have brunch. After church, has there ever been a greater day to be alive, to be the fellowship of the people of God? Am I right, brothers and sisters? My name is Pastor Jameson, and it's my privilege, along with Pastor Justin, Pastor Lindsay, Pastor Charlie, all of us here at 150 East Franklin, to welcome you here in person or online in worship. As you have time, take that pad that's in every row. On days like today, when some of you may be here uh, and, and worshiping with us, let us know how we can stay in, con in contact with you, how we can stay connected, the ways in which you want to get more involved in the life uh, of our church. Maybe you want to know more about this Wide Circle Worship Service and what it entails. We'd love to speak more with you about it. I also want to make you aware that there is a very important handout that goes along with our sermon. Not only can you uh, color and doodle in, I think this would allow you to put Pastor Justin and I's caricature on these two stoled individuals or their confirmands. We leave it up to your creativity during worship. Take an opportunity to look through our bulletin. Uh, young and old alike are free to use that. There will be several times during our worship service, both during a baptism and communion, where everyone uh, who is interested, especially our young people, will be invited to come forward. Listen for that direction. This is a Sunday in which we celebrate and share the sacraments and traditions of the church, and we want everyone to feel like they can participate. We're so excited that you're here with us. Uh, one brief bit of announcement is this Thursday night, we will be having a jazz vesper service in this very spot, 7 o'clock. Our very own Ty and Andrew will be leading us. We're very excited. We'll be featuring uh, the University of UMC Chancel Choir. It'll be a great night of worship and music. I hope that you'll come out for this performance to spend time uh, with our wonderful worship leadership and to see something that will truly bless all of us. As you can see, there's a lot going on uh, in the life of the church. But it's always a joy and a privilege when we can gather together and worship. So let's do that now.
Please join me in the card of worship. Gather us in, the brokenhearted and the joyful. Gather us in, the fearful and the brave. Gather us in to scene of God's works. Gather us in to praise Jesus Christ. Gather us in to worship and wonder. Gather us in to know of God's love. join our voices now together in prayer. Lord, help us to understand the simple truth. We are loved for who we are, not for what we know. Allow us to focus on you and trust that your love is enough. May we offer that same love to everyone we meet. Amen. You may be seated. to sing is called Inside Out. It is from our musical. It is a celebration of God's love for each of us. Remember, God is always with you, loving you no matter what.
Great job, choirs. You guys, I am so excited that it is Confirmation Sunday. We've got 20 youth ready to join the church today. Really yeah, exciting. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah. And the best part is, I get to give each one of them one of these. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, you get to give each one of them a, a name tag. Yes. Wow. It, it is a name badge. It's so official. It even has the church logo on it. See? Oh. Yeah, okay. I suppose it does. But. Is that really the most exciting thing about the day for you, Charlie? Well, I mean, think about it. Okay, when you go into a Target, right, and you see that person with the red shirt and the name badge that says Target on it, and you like, you know that there, there is a person who can help you. There is someone who knows which aisle you need to go to so that you can find that cat stroller so that you can take your cat on that walk. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You you take your cat on walks in a stroller? Sorry, uh, mm, no. I, I mean, it's like, it's like that. When you, when you come into our church and you, like, you see someone wearing one of these name badges, just look around, look at that person near you that has that name badge, and you think to yourself, I bet that person could help me if I had a question. Uh, when you come in church, you look for someone with a name badge to help you find a cat stroller. No, 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 no. What I mean is if I was new here, okay, and uh, I didn't know where the nursery was or the bathroom, I'd feel better knowing that one of the many people here with an official name badge, uh, they might be able to guide me there. Or at least maybe they could help point me to someone who would help me know where to get there. So right? you're excited because now we have 20 more people yes. who can help you find the bathroom. No. That's great. Uh, I guess that's uh, a little better than a cat stroller. But. Yes. Hmm. Um, okay, I mean, okay, you see all these students, right? These guys right here, okay? They've met together for two entire semesters with their mentors, wave at me mentors, hi all of you, and uh, they've come together for two whole semesters to learn the Christian faith. Yeah, just so they can tell people where the bathroom is? That's the whole... <laughs> well, wouldn't that be funny if that was the whole reason? Um, no, uh, they also, uh, well, they spent a lot of time researching um, and presenting a faith question that was important to them, like, oh, I don't know, who wrote the Bible, or can science and religion go together, uh, what are angels, you know, they've thought long and hard about what they believe, and all those presentations, they're up on the second floor, you can go see them after church and see what all these kids' conclusions are, and now they've decided that they want to join our church. Ah, okay, and... For all that, they get a name badge. Yeah, well, okay, it's a nice takeaway, sure, but it's, it's just a symbol of something much bigger that is happening here today. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm actually following you now. Um, so what you're saying is when you claim the name, or say the name of Christian, that is actually when you begin the lifelong journey of exploring your faith. That's when you let the world know that you want to be part of a community of faith. Yes, yes. Okay. You got it. Exactly. That's, that's it. Right, right. And so these students, all of you, you're, you're taking this step. You're affirming the promises that the church made for you at your baptism. You're saying that for yourself mm -hmm. now. That's actually kind of amazing. And you're doing it because they're doing it because they're saying, I want to love God, yeah. and I want to love people, I love my neighbor, and I want to give it all I've got. Yeah, like, like that's, that's exactly right. And um, I am so happy to walk... Oh, it's a little crooked, but... Oh, I'm so happy to walk beside them as today they commit to that faith journey. Well, okay. Let's get on with it then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do... I have one more question I'm really... I need answers for. Oh, yeah, what's that? Yeah, so, um, do you know where I can find a good cat stroller? <laughs> I'm going back up here. Okay. 
please join me for the prayer for illumination found in your bulletin. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus had asked him a third time. Do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you'll stretch out your hands and another will your belt and you'll lead and will lead you to where you want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Now is the right time to pull out your insert for the sermon if you want to follow along on Wide Circle Worship. We'd like to include uh, some contact words, some experiential words, uh, and, and also some playful words to really engage with the ways in which we feel like God's trying to speak with us. So I hope that you'll take time to follow along with that. We also find ourselves post-Easter, uh, but pre the next sermon series. So in the last sermon series, we were looking at these great questions that Jesus asked, which is fascinating to me because today is kind of a question as well. And our next sermon series is looking about vows of membership. So this Sunday sits in this beautiful place of knowing about Easter and then trying to explain as we go over the next couple months what it means to join the life of the church. So how beautiful it is that we had all of these brave volunteers to teach us everything we need to know about it. So whatever you do today is what we're gonna have to follow because we're traditionalists, so just don't make any mistakes. So that's how we have to do it every year, all right? No, I love that Confirmation Sunday is today. And it can feel like on a Confirmation Sunday of all things, we're gonna be talking a lot about what do we know about the church? What do we know about God? What do we know about each other? It can feel like there's a quiz. And I just wanna, you know, cut any anxiety because there will be a quiz at the end of this. I'm gonna ask every single one of you a question at the very end of this sermon. And if I don't like the answer, I'm shutting this down, all right? <laughs> Fair warning. But knowledge is a funny thing because we think we know what we know and then, you know, there's this thing that keeps happening. People keep being born. People keep discovering things. New information comes out. Like, take the original Greek, for instance. It's very unclear whether or not there should be more than 151 Pokemon. You know, you following me? I grew up in a generation of Pokemon Red and Blue, and we were perfectly happy with our 151, right? Now, I know a lot of you are really gelling with me right now, so also, if you don't know what a Pokemon is, find anyone young next to you, and they'll probably have some on their phone. I'd be happy to share it out. But I love Pokemon, and now I get to share that with my son. It's wonderful. But the crazy thing has happened from when I was my son's age to when, you know, my son was, is now the age that I was, there's now not just 151 Pokemon. There's like 600 and something Pokemon. And we have to ask ourselves, is that too many Pokemon? And the answer is obviously yes, but that's not the point today. The point is I have to learn, again, something that I love. And one thing that comes up in my house, parents, maybe you can uh, go along with this. You're trying to be excited about what your kids are into and you're, you're trying to learn. But I actually get homework assignments every evening. My son tells me, Dad, you need to learn what fairy types are weak to. I need you to talk to me about it in the morning over breakfast. And so I have to diligently go downstairs, study the Pokemon resource, and you know what? Uh, my son is a fair teacher, but he's also a consistent teacher, so that next morning during the breakfast conversation, I have to explain what fairy types are weak to. Uh, and I'm a little anxious right now, so I'm not gonna try to remember all the categories they're weak to. The point is, 
Something that I knew that was fun, a hobby, can now feel a little stressful because I don't know everything and I feel like I should. Now clearly, this is a colorful example. But I think for a lot of us, the things that we hold dear, the things that we think need to be ironclad truths, we don't like it when we suddenly wake up one day and think, wait, I thought I knew everything I needed to know about this topic. Now there's new information and I don't know what to do with it. So today I want to focus on what Jesus is doing with Peter because I think it's so important for all of us. In the Gospel of John, Jesus turns to Peter and they're having brunch uh, on the beach. Maybe the biblical foundation for why Wide Circle Brunch exists, I don't know. We'd have to talk to some of our leadership, but they're sitting on this beach, they're having fish, a Mediterranean barbecue, if you will, I guess I could stretch that. It should be brisket, but we, I digress. The point is, they're chatting, and then he turns to Peter and asks him the same question three times. And some of you astute biblical scholars in the room will say, well, didn't Peter just deny Jesus three times? And the answer is yes. But an amazing thing's happened. In this conversation in which Jesus is asking Peter, do you really love me? Do you really care about me? It doesn't seem to be shame. It doesn't feel like Jesus is trying to shame Peter. It feels like he's trying to help him. Because he doesn't show up and say, hey man, you heard any good roosters crow lately? You know, kind of the passive aggressive thing we would do with our friends uh, after we'd been betrayed, you know? Uh, I couldn't notice a little rib ticklery uh, during Easter when certain teams won in the tournament and certain did, didn't. Uh, there was beautiful trash talk out in our courtyard as the kids were searching for Easter bunnies. Why is that? Well, because it's kind of fun to jostle with each other. But at the end of the day, when we're in our vulnerable place, we kind of want to have a God that looks at us seriously and says, I don't want to make a joke of this. I don't want to make light of this. I care about you. So do you love me? And in asking that question, he's hoping that Peter feels healed and restored because he wants Peter to follow him, to go off and do great things in the life of the church. So I want to do something a little different here for the the next little bit of the sermon. I want to have some real talk uh, with our confirmants. So to do that, I'm going to sit down to get comfortable like you guys are. You know, it may not seem like it, but when you stand and preach for at least 30 or 40 minutes, like I'm planning to, a little five-minute break is great to have. <laughs> Stretch my legs here for a second, but real, real talk here. I have studied the faith for a long time. Now, you may find this surprising. I'm kind of a church nerd, you know. I got into the, the business even before I knew that I was going to be in the business, if that makes sense. I've grown up Methodist. But one amazing thing has happened to me in my life. The more I study... And I know there's people in here that have probably studied way more than me and people that have studied way less than me, but I wonder if no matter where you are on the study spectrum, if you've had this experience, the more I feel like I learn, the less I feel like I know. Have you ever had that experience? It's like, because you like answer one question and then what happens? Like 20 more questions come up. it's, It's like a viral pandemic that breaks out. Oh, too soon. It's like this thing that happens where you think you're trying to get certainty, but certainty is elusive. You keep trying to grab onto it, and it keeps growing and growing and growing, and sometimes I'm left thinking, God, there's so many questions left unanswered. How will I ever get to it? How will I ever know enough to know that I know enough? Are you plagued by that? Is this just me? Right? I I have this fear, and this is, is, you know, a nonspecific example that could have happened to one of us in the room, that something's going to happen like the time I tried to show off in a chemistry class about Einsteinium, Right? I was not that much younger, I feel like, than I am today when I literally thought that Albert Einstein had discovered Einsteinium, all right? And I'm in a chemistry classroom, and I'm saying, oh, yeah, and I was trying to make that joke about how he discovered it, and that's one of the reasons he was famous. And one of the people in that group turned to me and said, wait, seriously, you think that Albert Einstein discovered this? And I said, well, obviously not now. I mean, no, I don't think that. I felt foolish. Why? Because I thought something was true. And it's not. And if you want to learn more about Einsteinium, check up Bill Nye or look at the periodic table. But my point in all of that is it can feel like there is important information you're supposed to know. And when you don't know it, you're always going to have this nagging question that says, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I wise enough? Or am I just pretending? Is who I am good enough for whatever I'm trying to do? What I hope that you hear today, because this is one thing that has become consistent, at least for me, 
God loves you not for what you know. God loves you simply because you are. Who you are is beautiful. And so the question that is posed to each of us is, do you know that God loves you? Really, you may feel like you're joining today for confirmation, and you could be a little nervous when, you know, true, true confessions there. When you were starting to practice, and we're going to ask you questions, were you a little afraid they might be open-ended? Like, hey, tell me what you guys studied in week seven, right? <laughs> hey, you guys remember that great prayer practice workshop that I led? I know you do. It was excellent, right? right? Huh? People are listening. Say yes. Okay, golly, oh, you're hanging me out to dry. No, it's not about that. What it's about is really a simple response with some beautiful liturgy. Do you know that God loves you? And do you want to be a part of a place that wants to help other people know that God loves them? In my mind, that's the simplest extension of the church of God. We are loved, therefore we love. And so my, my real prayer is that we'll have some, some self-compassion. Uh, we won't worry about exactly how we're dressed every Sunday. Some of you may be thinking that you need to put on your finest pantaloons, which is some fancy, fancy digs. Uh, also, they feel a little piratey. It may be out of season. Instead, what you're going to reflect on is, no, I'm here because I know God loves me. And I know God loves us. And I know that that love is enough for whatever the world has to offer to us. And my prayer is that for the rest of my days, I will pray over your life that you'll know that you're loved and that you belong here with us. Will you pray with me? God, it can feel like during a season of study, of inquiry, uh, as even our confirmants have taken these two semesters to learn, that that's the measure that will be held up to us, what we know. But God, in this space, if even it's just for today, may we be reminded it's not about what we know, it's about who you are that loves us for who we are. And that love is sufficient. That love is fulfilling. That love is trustworthy. So that when we look out into a world desperate to know that kind of love, we ourselves can offer it to them. Because you first loved us, may we be so bold to love others. And Lord, open our hearts with glee and excitement for our confirmands that come before us today. Let us be excited about their journey, excited about their commitments, and in speaking their vows for the first time, may we be reminded of our own, of a story that is ageless, about a love that is steadfast, and about a hope that is found in the one who sat on a beach with his disciples and said, follow me. Lord, it's for that I pray. Amen.
be seated. <clears throat> we invite you to turn to the service of baptism and confirmation on page 33 in your hymnals, and we invite all of our children who would like to come and watch up close to come and sit on our baptismal blanket up here. So kids, come on down while I start talking. Just kids, get on up. Just kids, just get on up. Yeah, come on down. There you go. Congregation, you found page 33? All right. Siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. It's my privilege to present this list of wonderful folks to come forward to join with us. For baptism, I present Kathleen Julia Westbrook. For confirmation, I present Elena Josephine Anderson, Caroline Elizabeth Angel, Bryce James Bedford, Charlotte Iris Bice, Caitlin Elizabeth Campbell, Kathleen Conley Eubanks, Audrey Elizabeth Fitch, William Miles Fitch, Charlotte Priest Hardin, Jack Michael Jones, John Hunter Nelson, Winston Stephen Player, Tyler Timothy Smith, Lindley Bador Sneed, Charles Nathan Steinbeck, Emmeline Amelia Warner, and Maxwell Carver Whittington. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves and do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with Christ uh, in union with the church which Christ is open to people of all ages nations and races and according to the grace given to you Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And to our parents and mentors, will you who sponsor these candidates support and encourage them in their Christian life? I will. And now, church, do you, as Christ's body, reaffirm your rejection of sin and commitment to Christ? We do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
At this point, I will invite the Westbrook family to join Katie at the baptismal font. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their, their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right. Kathleen, Julia, I baptize you in the name of God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may be found to be a faithful disciple of Christ who walks in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, now, before we move forward, Katie, it was suggested that I should... Uh, maybe walk you around the congregation with your parents and such, but we're going to forgo that today. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, yes, all right, I thought so. <laughs> all right, let us join together. It is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen, amen. At this point, we invite our confirmants to take your place at the altar and our mentors to join us up front. Congregation, as we pray over each student, we will pray for them by name, we'll lay hands on them, and their mentors will place their confirmation stoles upon their shoulders, which are a reminder of the ministry of all Christians. As we pray for each student, we invite you to reach out your hand as a sign of blessing. You may also stand if you know particular students as a sign of recognition. Uh, but please join us in a spirit of prayer. Confirmands, you may now turn and kneel at the altar. Elena Josephine, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Caroline Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bryce James, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may, be, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Charlotte Iris, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, 
you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kaylin Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kathleen Conley, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Audrey Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. William Miles, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Charlotte Priest, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jack Michael, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water in the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. John Hunter, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Winston Stephen, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Tyler Timothy, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lindley Bador. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Charles Nathan, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Emmeline Amelia, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kathleen Julia. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Maxwell Carver, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, congregation, we did it, right? Yep, just, just, just give them a round of applause. <laughs> All right. And now, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Will you? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And the congregation says, we give, we give thanks, thanks for all that God, God has already given you, and, and we, we welcome, welcome you in Christian, Christian love. As, as members together with you in the body, body of Christ and, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified 
through Jesus Christ. Now receive this blessing from all of us. And congregation, will you hold your hands up with me as we bless these folks? The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read over your shoulder. That you may live in grace and peace. Amen. 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 You may return to your seats. Give them another hand. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And now we'll have a generosity moment. Good morning. I am Elizabeth, um, mom to Caroline, who just got confirmed, and mentor to Kathleen, who was also just confirmed. And um, I just want to share a couple of things with you. This has been a full circle experience for me. Um, I grew up in the United Methodist Church, and my mom would always have us at church at least every other week. And with four kids and a very busy husband, that was quite a feat. I was in Sunday school, and I was in Bible school and volunteered all the way through. went to ASP twice and was spent my Sunday nights at youth group. Um, but then when I went to school, I, became, I was missed home. I missed home a lot. I lived in Everett Dorm, not far from here, and I found myself just homesick, very homesick. And so one Sunday morning, I showed up here, and I sat in the back right pew because that's where my family always sat, right? And it felt like home. It was comfortable, it was affirming, it was familiar, and it healed all the homesickness, right? It was everything that I was missing, and it reminded me of home. I hope that through this experience that these confirmands have grown in their faith and realized that in their faith they really are never alone. I was not alone, and I hope that they too will forever find the feelings of comfort and peace and home that you find in faith. Thank you for supporting this experience for both the confirmands and the mentors. Charlie has done an incredible job every Sunday, and we're very grateful. Thank you. I'm Jim Bedford. I'm honored to be a confirmation mentor for my son, Bryce. I was baptized here at University UMC as a college student, and so I hadn't experienced confirmation growing up, but the door was still open for me to be a confirmation mentor. I gained a lot of knowledge and meaning by being a mentor, and I would encourage you all to consider volunteering in future years. Thank you to Pastor Charlie and the entire church for supporting a welcoming, open-minded, informative, and loving confirmation process. I trust it will benefit all the youth and the mentors throughout their lives in the church. Thank you. Well, having been a confirmation mentor myself this time around, it is such a gift. This has been such a beautiful process, and we have such an amazing group of confirmands here. So just one more time, let's give them and the mentors a hand. We uh, move now into our time of offering. In a moment, the ushers will come forward and Uh, pass plates uh, down the pew. Uh, You can also give by using, you can give digitally by using the information that's here in your bulletin. May we give with glad and generous hearts. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the spirit. 
Let us join together in our great thanksgiving. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed you to be a church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The good news is that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, I would like to invite our children to come forward, as is our custom on Wide Circle Worship, to gather around the table with me. And as they gather, while we enter into this spirit of prayer for the great Thanksgiving, I would encourage our congregation's prayers for Rita Bigham as she begins chemotherapy treatment this Thursday. Also, uh, prayers for the family of Rex Tucker, who passed away during Holy Week this year. Let us keep them in prayer as we join together in this great prayer. All right, kids, so you want to create enough space in between you so that you can do all the arm motions with me during the great Thanksgiving. All right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us he took bread and after giving thanks to you he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me And after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us be bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, We who are many are made to be one body, for the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Kiddos, you may be seated. And with those who will be assisting in the serving of communion, please come forward. Siblings in Christ, our table has been prepared. Won't you come to Christ's table of grace? the 
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In Christ's holy name, amen. Uh, as we stand and sing our closing hymn, if any would desire to come forward for prayer, for dedication or rededication of your life to Christ, or to join with this congregation, please join the clergy and myself in front of the chancel as we sing. Let us stand. to the people, healing all the sick ones, see Jesus on the cross, bearing all my sins, in bitter agony, Jesus died to save us. Rose on Easter morning, and lives forever. We're singing hallelujah, Jesus is my Savior, who lives forever. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. So just for one moment, everyone, uh, be seated for a moment. Uh, please turn to page 37 in your hymnals. Now, Max was confirmed today, but now it's time to bring in all of the Whittington family into the life of the church. <laughs> David and Tracy and Hannah and Spencer, all of them are joining uh, today. So uh, I have just a couple questions uh, for you. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Will you? Yes. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> and as members of this congregation, will you be faithful to participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you? Yes. All right. Now, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Won't you give them a hand? Yay! <laughs> You're official. <laughs> All right, now, Jameson, <laughs> you're up. Something in.
So I'm going to take a little risk here, and as I give you this benediction, I'm going to give a compliment to Pastor Justin. Do you think about what he says almost every week for the benediction? Because, you know, as Methodists, we're really good about hearing the same thing over and over again, and maybe we don't think about it. What does he say? Remember that we love you. We hope you have a good week. I hope today you realize that we is not just the wonderful folks that are sitting around you in the pew, because it is. It's all of those that worship online with us. And of course, it's Jesus Christ, the one who reminded Peter about that great love. So I hope when you hear the words today and receive this benediction, you'll know it's God above and your church community below, surrounding you in the steadfast love that you need to experience the life God has for you. So, why don't you stand and receive this benediction. So to quote one of my favorite theologians, remember that we love you. <laughs> we hope you have a great week. <laughs> and the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. you. And because we're not beating the Baptists anywhere to lunch today, we have wide circle brunch in the fellowship hall. Please join us there. <laughs> If you are a confirmation person, please come to the front for a picture. Confirmation group photo time.